I'm Jake Tapper, our politics lead right now. Republican lawmakers now face a choice that might baffle King Solomon, split the Republican Party, or give it to the last person you want to give it to by unifying around the most unlikely, and some critics say, the most unrepublican nominee in the party's history. Donald Trump, for better or for worse, will lead the GOP into November. In just minutes, my exclusive interview with House Speaker Paul Ryan. Will he endorse Trump? What does he think? The party's base wed itself to Trump, but some Republican thought leaders, senators, governors, former presidents, members of the House, they're already refusing to walk down the aisle with the soon-to-be nominee. Sunland Sarfati is here with me in Washington. And Sunland, if Donald Trump thought the establishment was going to get behind him after he clinched the nomination, well, he's mistaken. That's right, Jake. You know, there are some who are lining up behind Donald Trump, but there still is very much this war raging on between Trump and factions of his own party still reluctant to embrace him as the nominee. The presumptive GOP nominee is facing a new wave of defiance within his own party. Four of the last five Republican presidential nominees are now skipping the GOP convention. So I went to a very rough primary where I was very harsh on some people like Jeb Bush and you know you wonder why the Bush family wants to sit it out and when I hear that they're going to sit it out I think that's fine I don't care if they sit it out. This as some prominent never Trump Republicans are also working into overdrive to draft a third party candidate to run against him. In my opinion, it's not over yet. Um, we can still stop him, and I would like to. Nebraska Republican Senator Ben Sass posting this open letter, asking of those who say their only choice is Trump or Clinton, why is that the only choice? Sass calling for voters to rally around a third-party candidate, writing, I think there is room, an appetite for such a candidate. But the problem, no such candidate has stepped up yet. I do not want nor will I accept the nomination for our party. Meantime, some panic is setting in about Trump's potential effect on down-ballot candidates. Arizona Senator John McCain expressing concerns to donors at a closed-door fundraiser last month, according to a recording obtained by CNN. Donald Trump at the top of the ticket here in Arizona, with over 30% of the vote being Hispanic vote, I have no doubt that this may be the race of my life. But Trump, in an interview with CNN's Wolf Blitzer, is signaling he's moving forward. So the general election campaign, from your perspective, starts today? Essentially, it started. I mean, it, yeah, it started today. It started actually three months ago when I hit her pretty hard, and she went down. And Among the items on his to-do list, organize a list of vice presidential options. I think probably in terms of vice president, I'm going to go the political route. I don't need the business route. I've got that covered. Trump shooting down Hillary some names being points. floated. No, not Portland. Nikki Haley. No, Nikki Haley, no. Uh, she wasn't under consideration. But indicating openness to some former rivals. Marco's a good guy, a really nice guy, and I like him, but uh, not necessarily with respect to any position, but it could happen. And announcing today his national finance chairman, building out a fundraising operation for the general election fight ahead. And as Donald Trump tries to consolidate support within the party, sources tell CNN that Trump's campaign met today with roughly a dozen Hill aides on Capitol Hill and are working on setting up a meeting between Trump and some key congressional leaders soon. But Jake, as of now, no definitive date has been set for that. All right, Sondland Sarfati, thanks so much. And joining me now, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, former Republican vice presidential nominee Paul Ryan. Speaker Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Jake. How are you doing today? So, Mr. Speaker, you have said throughout this process that you will support the Republican presidential nominee. Now you have a presumptive nominee, Donald Trump. Will you support him? Well, uh, to be perfectly candid with you, Jake, uh, I'm just not ready to do that at this point. I'm not there right now. Uh, and I hope to, though, and I want to. But I think what is required is that we unify this party. And I think the bulk of the burden on unifying the party um, will have to come from our presumptive nominee. Um, I don't want to underplay what he accomplished. He, he needs to be congratulated for an enormous accomplishment for winning not now a plurality of delegates, and he's on his way to winning a majority of delegates. But he also inherited something very special uh, that's very special to a lot of us. Uh, this is the party of Lincoln, of Reagan, of Jack Kemp. And we don't always nominate a Lincoln and a Reagan every four years. Um, but we hope that our nominee um, aspires to be Lincoln and Reagan-esque. Um, that that person um, advances the principles um, of our party and appeals to a, a wide, vast majority of Americans. And so 
I think what is necessary to make this work, to, for this to unify, is to actually take our principles and advance them. And that's what we want to see. Saying we're unified doesn't in and of itself unify us, but actually taking the principles that we all believe in, showing that there's a dedication to those, and running a principle campaign that Republicans can be proud about, and that can actually appeal to a majority of Americans, that to me is what it takes to unify this party. So you're saying you can't you can't support or endorse him right now. Yeah, I am basically saying that. Look, I'm, I, I, that's, you know, I thought about this two days ago. Um, I thought actually this thing was gonna go to June 7 at the very least, probably to a convention. And so this is all pretty new for us. But at this point, um, I think that he needs to do more to unify this party, to bring all wings of the Republican party together, um, and then to go forward and to appeal to all Americans in every walk of life, every background, um, a majority of independents and, and, and discerning Democrats. And so, you know, I think conservatives want to know, does he share our, our values and our principles on limited government, the proper role of the executive, adherence to the Constitution? Um, there are lots of questions that conservatives, I think, are going to want answers to, myself included. And I want to be a part of this unifying process. I want to help unify this party, but we have to unify it, I think, for us to be successful. For us to have a campaign that Republicans are proud of going forward that is unifiable and that, that actually can go and appeal to a vast majority of Americans. Well, Mr. Speaker, you're, you're casting this in characteristically optimistic and positive terms, and I would expect no less from you. But what you're saying is a fairly dramatic announcement that the Speaker of the House cannot, as of now, support his party's nominee for president. Is there something specific that he has done or said that has brought you to this moment? Well, like I said, I hope to support our nominee. I hope to support his candidacy fully, and I want to do that. But right now, just I gotta tell you, Jake, I'm just being candid with you, at this point, uh, I'm just not there right now. Um, and it's because I think of part of the last campaign, I don't wanna go back and roll the tape. Look, I was pretty clear, and I've, I was outspoken on a number of occasions where I think that, that, that he did the wrong thing or said the wrong thing. And I'll do that in the future if need be. I hope it's not necessary. Um, but I think what a lot of Republicans want to see is that we have a standard bearer that bears our standards and that unifies all the wings of the Republican Party, which we all come from different wings of our party, but we all agree on a common platform of conservative principles. We want somebody who takes these conservative principles, applies them to the problems, and offers solutions to the country that a vast majority of Americans can vote for that they want to be enthusiastic about. That is what I think it takes to unify the party. That, I think there's work that needs to be done in order to unify the party. I think our nominee, our presumptive nominee, needs to do that. I want to be a part of helping him do that. But right now, no, uh, I, I think that, you know, there's some work to do here. Let me say it this way. Republicans have been watching each other go after each other for six months. Democrats are doing the same thing because we've had a primary, a bitter primary process. And, and I think we sometimes forget just how successful we've been. We have the biggest House majority since 1928. We have 54 Republican Senate seats. We have state legislative majorities and governorships that, that we haven't seen in years, in decades. And so we've done extremely well. Our party is having enjoying success because we've unified around common conservative principles. And we have one more hill to climb, one more mountaintop. That's the presidency. So please know that we think the stakes are extremely high. They're the highest that they've been. The Supreme right. Court, Congress, the future of America is on the line. And no Republican should ever think about supporting Hillary Clinton. Let, let me make that clear. But for us to be a successful party, to climb that final hill and win the presidency, we will need a standard bearer that can unify all Republicans, all conservatives, all wings of our party, and then go to the country with an appealing agenda that can, uh, that can be appealing to independents and disaffected Democrats. But, and we have work to do on this front, and I think our nominee um, has to lead in that effort. As you know, uh, Mitt Romney, John McCain, George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush, all of them, Republican presidential nominees or presidents, have said they're not going to go to the convention in Cleveland. In fact, I, I want to get your view. Watch this clip of your former running mate, Mitt Romney, talking about Donald Trump earlier this year. Think of Donald Trump's personal qualities, the bullying, the greed, the showing off, the misogyny, the absurd third grade theatrics. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. 
His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. He's playing the members of the American public for suckers. He gets a free ride to the White House, and all we get is a lousy hat. Do you share Governor Romney's views? Trump's a phony, a bully, and a fraud? Look, here's what I think, Jake, and I think you're going to see tapes like that running all fall. The question is, can our presumptive nominee um, turn things around, unify, and have a different kind of cadence going forward? The way I look at this, Jake, is it's time to go from tapping into anger to channeling that anger into solutions. It's time to set aside uh, bullying, uh, to set aside belittlement, and appeal to higher aspirations, appeal to, to what is good in us, and to lead a country and a party to having a vast majority of Americans enthusiastic about choosing a path. That's why I, I just feel so strongly about the, the chance and the choice and, and, the, and the opportunity we have in front of us. But for this to work, our presumptive nominee, I believe, needs to unify the party for the party to be unified. And, and I want to help him do possible? that. Do you think that's even possible? Do you think that's possible? But just so you know, Jake, we're not there right now. We're not there right now. Yeah, I think it's possible, but we're not there right now. And I think it is possible, and we better get on with it. But I think we just need to be honest with each other about these things. And look, I think, yeah, I think we can beat Hillary Clinton. Are you kidding me? So yes, I think it's possible, and it, and it needs to be possible because so much is at stake. So you don't but think work needs you don't to think the damage and I has think been done? I think our nominee has a bit of work to do. You don't think that, that. you don't think that so much damage has been done that it's almost as if it's a lost cause? Because it seems to me, from hearing people like Mitt Romney, hearing Ted Cruz the other day call Donald Trump a pathological liar on the eve of Donald Trump winning it all. Uh, Donald Trump was attacking his father and suggesting that Rafael Cruz might have played a role in the Kennedy assassination. Uh, it doesn't seem like there are going to be, it's going to be possible to build that many bridges. You disagree? I, I'm familiar with the points you're making. <laughs> that is why, uh, among other reasons, basically as a conservative, I want to see a verification that our conservative principles will be championed, uh, will be run on, will be represented, um, and will be uh, brought to the pu public in the country in a way that's appealing for us to be successful. So, like I said, we're not there yet, but yet, I mean, look, this man is going to get the nomination because he earned it, he deserved it, he won the vote. And more importantly, I think those of us need to learn a few lessons here. I think there's a bit of humility that each of us need, especially leaders in, in Congress, which is he tapped into something in this country that was very powerful. And people are sending a message to Washington that we need to learn from and listen to but at the same time, now that we have a presumptive nominee who is going to be our standard bearer, I think it's very important that there's a demonstration that, that our standards will be, will be bared. I mean, that, that he will advance our appreciation for limited government, for the Constitution, for, for the proper role of the executive, for the principles, not, not only built our party, but built this country, and how we're going to apply those principles to offer solutions and run a, run a campaign that Republicans can be proud of and run a campaign that Americans can be proud of. And yeah, looking back, on the primary campaign, I think there are instances and episodes that question that. That's why I, at this point, am not ready uh, to jump in. Uh, but I hope we can get there, and that's my goal. You will be gaveling in the convention as the Speaker of the House. If he hasn't become this Reagan-esque, Lincoln-esque, Jack Kemp-esque nominee that you, that you need him to be, that you want him to be in order for you to say that you support him, what are you going to do? Can you manage the convention if you haven't yet decided that you can support him? Look, I'm, I'm just a guy giving you my peace of mind. Um, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong conservative who feels passionate about these principles and how they're necessary to save our country and get us on the right track. We are on the wrong track as a country. And we stay down this road much further with Hillary Clinton or, or Bernie Sanders. It's going to be ugly for this country. And so I desperately want to see us unify on principles and ideas and policies and an agenda and win the hearts and the minds of the vast majority of Americans and speak to everybody. And I am hoping that that's where some this goes, but I don't know that that's Some true. stunning words just now from Speaker Paul Ryan saying he cannot support Donald Trump, the Republican nominee right now. Joining me, Kaylee McEnany. She's a CNN political commentator and Trump supporter. Also here, CNN political commentator, S.E. Cup, CNN chief political correspondent, Dana Bash. Their reaction to Speaker Ryan's interview when we come back.